Hey everybody, it's me, Remy, the comic book poser, and I'm here today to welcome you to Enter the Poserverse. It's Tuesday. You know what I'm talking about on Tuesday. It's all the stuff that I'm going to read and pick up on New Comic Book Day on Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020. So to figure out what intarnations I'll be reading this week, you'll find out after this. This is a week chock full of a bunch of books that, that I like a lot. Uh, coming in first is Atlantis Attacks number five. I've really enjoyed uh, this second wave of the New Agents of Atlas series that uh, you have a good throwdown between the Agents of Atlas and the Atlanteans over some like miscommunication. Uh, and now you see the Atlanteans and the Serenus attacking each other. You can also see that there is some King and Black braining on this one, and I don't know how much of that event is going to seep into this book, but I do know that there are two Namor books coming out with the King and Black that I'm real excited about. So I've loved this series. It's been one of my favorite reads of a new cast of characters to me uh, that I enjoy when it comes out. Next from DC is Batman 104. Y'all know how much I love Batman 103, that it was my number two pick of the week when it came out. I think the Ghost Maker is such a compelling new character in terms of watching the, the methodology of Ghost Maker versus Batman in terms of the games that they're each playing. And I'm real, real excited to see what happens, especially now that we know that Harley Quinn is still trying to be a good guy. Uh, what happens? What is the fate of the Clown Hunter since he is the entity that Batman and the uh, Ghost Maker most recently disagree uh, on how to handle, but I, I can't wait for it. Coming up next is the much anticipated Bat Batcat series from Tom King at DC. Uh, I want to see what happens. I was really intrigued watching the relationship dynamic between the two of these uh, characters play their way out during Tom King's run on Batman. I was kind of miffed to see that the wedding got called off, but I want to see everything that kind of plays through their their relationship narrative in, in this book. Next, Black Widow number four. I've really enjoyed what Kelly Thompson has done on this. In book three, uh, we've learned that, you know, Natasha is not aware that she's part of a simulation. We have learned that, like, a couple of the, uh, I almost said X-Men, Avengers are, are tracking her to see if they need to pull her out, but she's becoming more and more self-aware that something isn't right so i want to see what what happens next i know the the people on the inside are kind of disagreeing on whether or not they kill her whether or not they continue to string her along but i want to see what happens next coming up next for marvel is daredevil 25 i'm really going to be surprised if this book actually comes out this week since we got daredevil 24 last week that i think this will be the first time we've seen daredevil in consecutive weeks but who knows? Uh, book number 24 was interesting in terms of Matt Murdock to see it deciding to take a deal to plead guilty to second degree, um, like, homicide? No. Second degree manslaughter? Whatever the charges were, he's admitted guilt, so we will see what he does behind bars. Uh, I want to see what Zdarsky and Chichetto do on this. I'm going to be real excited if we get this book after reading 24 last week but i like i said this is one of those books that i don't know if it's actually coming out or if we'll get pushed back a week next from dc is deceased at planet number six i've in, enjoyed this that now they are playing in in hell uh to figure out if they can create a cure to the anti-life equation uh i've i've been really really thoroughly enjoying everything that's gone on in this series especially after i read uh all of the initial deceased run that it makes so much more sense to me i think it's it's a very fun elsewhere next up from awa is e radic number one this is uh the first of the next new wave of awa titles um and the the description is simple you're you're 15 and you have superpowers but you can only use them 10 minutes at a time what do you do if you've like juiced out your power it makes me think of like the the beta capsule from Ultraman, right? 
where you can push it but you're only powerful for three minutes and then it takes quite some time to recharge. I want to see what this kind of story premise plays on with, with younger kids. Uh, but everything from AWA for me has been a hit. Uh, the first arc of Devil's Highway wrapped up last weekend and it was fantastic. Uh, so I'm excited to, to check out a new number one from, from Image Skybound is Firepower number six. This is the end of the first story arc. This book has been building and building and building to me. Uh, I have said a couple of times that I don't know if the ongoing series has been as compelling as the trade was, but book five kind of turned the series around for me, and I want to see how they wrap everything up in, in Firepower number six before we take, what, a couple month break before number seven comes out but it's been pretty dope you should if you haven't read the prelude read the prelude if you think that thing is your jam then definitely pick up the the trade for volume one uh when it comes out next up from vault comics is heavy number three i have loved this book you know i find new ways to to sing my my love for max bemis we'll see what new say anything video clip i can drop in here oh Uh, but we've got, you know, Bill and the man who is, is, you know, guilty of his death. They are now partners. Uh, they are working to continue to be heavies to, for Bill to get out and be able to spend eternity with his wife, who is also dead. Um, but they now have to take down another former heavy who may know their tactics. So I'm intrigued. Next up is Hellions number seven. This is the first week of X-Men books that have not wrapped into the Ten of Swords event because it wrapped up this weekend. The end of the uh, event was kind of weird to me. Like it went from an odd dance off last week or two weeks ago to like a rushed ending this week. So we'll see if I, how I feel about all things in my pile of X uh, in the books, how things kind of wrap up after the Ten of Swords destruction. I don't know. But I like Hellions. I like Sinister. Uh, he's probably my favorite of all of like, the, the, the villains, all of the people who were, were anticipating their heel turn from the Quiet Council. So I, I can't wait to see what's next. Next, we've got Justice League Endless Winter number one. This is DC's winter event. It's like seven different issues that tie into like justice league obviously um but i think there's like a flash book there was like a nightwing book so i'm intrigued to see what happens in this one uh depending on how i like the first one will really dictate whether or not i pick up the other subsequent books from the arc or from the event or if i just take some time off from the justice league after we have been told for what seems like a century now that null is coming null is actually coming we get King in Black number one. This is an event I'm kind of excited for because I've been reading everything that has been leading uh, to the the arrival of Null. I enjoyed the, the symbiote Spider-Man alien reality King in Black tie-in that came out two weeks ago. Uh, so I'm excited to see if, you know, this has been building to an actual compelling story arc or if I'm going to get mad at this book in the same way that we did when we found out that what virus was Scorpion. And it was like, boo. I hope it's dope. Please, for the love of God. Next up from Mad Cave Studios is Knights of the Golden Sun number eight. This is the first Mad Cave Studios book that I picked up after the, the showcase that I bought the trade of Knights of the Golden Sun, which had books one through seven. And it's a really interesting story about, you know, the the battle for Providence in that time when, like, God's like, nah, fuck it, I'm gone for a while. Uh, and you're seeing the angels kind of losing faith. You're seeing the dark forces starting to kind of build up. And, you know, you're seeing this ongoing, like, battle for, for heaven when God's not necessarily there. But it's, it's real good. I read this book in a preview, and I know the first thing that I'm going to do before I get the, the hot, fresh copy in my hands is sit down and read uh, the trade one more time to get back into it. But this is this has been a really in interesting 
story for me, and it was a breath of fresh air from a, a you know a new to me publisher that is now one of hands down my favorite. Uh, we got a Marvel Tales collection of null stories, so it's eight bu eight bucks of stuff that's reprinted. Uh, next, we've got Modok Head Games number one. Modok is just one of those strange characters that I tend to like. Uh, I didn't know that there was a Hulu show coming with with some Modok in it. I don't, it might actually be out now, uh, but I love Patton Oswalt, who he and Jordan Bloom are the showrunners. Uh, I've seen some interviews with them talking about getting to create this in comic book form, uh, so I'm I'm intrigued to see what happens with the the dude with the massive head. Next up, we've got back-to-back -back Aftershock books and Miles to Go number three and Red Atlantis number two. Miles to Go, you're learning about the young woman who is maybe as skilled as her mother was, who was, you know, murked in the in the first book. Uh, is she becoming uh, an assassin as well? Uh, but this book has been an absolute uh, joy to read. Red Atlantis number two, when number one came out, it was my pick of the week. Uh, I think Stephanie Phillips is hitting a home run on this one that it was weird to read in a book about a Russian attack on election day, on the day after the presidential election. But it's interesting. Uh, there are some Russian sleeper agents that have found ways to use technology to take control of Americans' minds, and uh, I'm here for it. It's, it's a dope, dope premise. Uh, I like watching them play with technology, play with the character development, figure out why some people were affected, some people were not. This is probably going to be the top of the stack this week because I need I need more of that and I need it quickly. Uh, next up from Scout is Shit Show number one. Before I moved from the uh, closet down here to the basement, uh, I used to prominently have the ash can for Shit Show um, displayed behind me. This book is just wild. Uh, I'll put another link to Comic Burrito here at the top. They had the writer for Shit Show number one on this week, or not this week in comics. Uh, he was a drive through burrito uh, maybe about six weeks ago now. But this book is going to be crazy. And it's yet another reason why I love the randomness that is uh, the things that come from Scout. Next, from Dark Horse, we've got Spy Island number four. I have sang the praises of the first three issues of this book uh, that I think the story is interesting in terms of weird shit happening in the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, I think the, the photorealistic art in this, I love this book for the same reason that I love and miss Man Eaters, that it's just something that is different and compelling, and it's engaging to read... Uh, that I like it that it's a big action story with some very tongue-in-cheek elements to it, and I want to figure out what the hell's going to happen with all these mermaids. They're scary. They're attacking people. Next up from DC is Strange Adventures number seven. It feels like six months since number six came out, uh, but apparently Batman shows up in this one. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see what Batman has to do in the world of Adam Strange, but we're starting to get more insight into what Adam Strange is being convicted of. Is it Mr. Terrific, Mr. Fantastic? Uh, the conversation that he's been having with Adam Strange's wife about his trial. It's been, it's been interesting that I think in the same way that I'm glad that I read Mr. Miracle and Trade, that I think I will enjoy strange adventures more when I can sit down and binge it all at once that it's been a good story it's been you know compelling art but I think this is one of those that is just meant to be read in trade I'm still going to finish by so from image we've got that Texas blood number six the end of the first arc we're starting to see if the brother can find justice uh bearded comic bro did an interview with Chris Condon uh two weeks ago that was pretty interesting to see him talk about the series as more issues have come out versus uh, Chris and Oscar from Lost in Comics getting to interview Condon Phillips, I think right before issue two came out or as issue two came out. So it was interesting watching them, you know, talk about the book as more of them have been out there. Next up for Marvel is Thor number 10. Uh, I am intrigued as hell to figure out what happens in a world where Thor may now be trapped in Donald Blake's body in a alternate universe, alternate timeline. Uh, but 
this has been a wild ride. I thought the end of the first arc was kind of anticlimactic, but I'm definitely here for figuring out what happens for, for Thor to become Thor again. Thought we were going to get this book last week and didn't. Maybe we'll get it this week in Transformers Back to the Future number two, but like I've said, every time I've seen this cover coming soon image on League of Comic Geeks, it's either been from a super small publisher, which IDW is not, or that means it's going to get pushed back another week. We'll see. I need my Transformers. Either in Back to the Future or with My Little Pony. I need it in my life. There's a hole right now. Next up for Marvel... The Union number one. I don't know why I'm pulling this. Uh, maybe it's because I started liking Captain Britain uh, in Excalibur and throughout the Ten of Swords event. Maybe it's to make me feel more cultured as I am learning about different superheroes from around the world. So this is a book I'm intrigued to see if it stays on my pull list or not. Next, we've got X-Factor number five, the, the second of the two X-Men books that are coming out this week uh, in terms of post Ten of Swords event so we will see what happens after uh you know some people died after the final decisions of the the battle between krakoa and Araco. i'm intrigued i really think as much as i love x-men and i think bendis has been doing awesome things on x-men what this universe looks like and how they pick up the pieces after ten of swords will dictate whether or not I keep pulling X-Men stuff weekly or if I just start playing catch-up in the trades. I don't know, but that's that's everything I've got on my list this week. Um, I know that Sword number one is coming out soon, so if I missed it, it could be coming out this week. If not, it's in another week or two, obviously, because it's not on the list. But what do you think? Is there anything on my list that you're like, nope, mission abort, get rid of it? Anything that you're like, mm, maybe I'm interested in that? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Have a good one.